everybody, welcome to the training kitchen here at Donington, where today we're coming to you live thanks to Tesco's Community Fund. My name's Simon. I'm Sian. And today we are going to bring together some store cupboard essentials, just five ingredients to make a beautiful store cupboard festive feast, which anybody can have, really. Absolutely. And it's all made with stuff that could just be tucked away at the back of that store cupboard that everybody's forgotten they've even got. Yeah, absolutely. This is a brilliant way of really effectively putting together a showstopper type dish for your festive holidays uh, really from things that as simon said we do all have them knocking about in the back of the Just cupboard stuck at the back of the cupboard it doesn't involve fresh ingredients it's allowing you to really be resourceful shop your larder really dig out those things that are just lurking in the back. That's there, everything we want, really. And turn them into something with a real wow factor. Yeah, which is fun. full of nutrition, yes. full of flavour. Yeah, and again... And in, at the back of the cupboard. In that way that UK Harvest, we really like to champion being courageous to just swap in and out alternatives. So all the way along, I'll be trying really hard to give you loads of good ideas about yep. ways that you could be versatile with this suggestion of a recipe. It really is the perfect opportunity to find an alternative ingredient if you don't have exactly what Simon's using today. There are many, many options of doing this in many different ways. They're all going to be cheap. They all offer good for all of us and gives us the chance to do something a little Start bit special. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the best really bit about way. all of it, it tastes great at the end. It will. So yeah. let's have a look and see what we've got on our board for okay, today. Okay. So if we go down to the board, we've got a tin of butter beans. We've got a tin of sliced carrots. We've got a tin of sliced mushrooms, the good old corned beef. And we've just got a packet of stuffing mix. Okay, so, okay? so yeah. five ingredients. And That's I'm seeing from need. there, Simon, we've got a really good selection nutritionally, vitamins, protein, yep. carbohydrate, and really pulling it together, nice selection of colour, which is always a good indication so, yeah, of nutrients. We want that. Yep. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. if you don't, if you're on a meat-free diet, you don't need corned beef. Um, there's loads of stuff on the market at the moment, including packet mixes. We've got one over here, actually. Mm -hmm. Sort of winter grains or the, the sort of quinoa mixed uh, lentils, mixed really lentil good. grains, everything else. One of those pouches is normally a meal for sort of one person. Mm -hmm. Using that, you're going to feed the whole family. Just swap the corned beef and just use that. Don't microwave it first because it's going to go in the oven and get cooked. Absolutely. So if you did want to switch it out, again... There's options for everything. So we're including today a meat version of a protein. But yeah, just to underline again, those vegetable protein alternatives, inexpensive, highly nutritious, really work well in this type of recipe. And easy to get hold of. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's crack on, shall cool. we? Oh, yeah, go Could you do me doing? a favour and yep. get me 425-ish yes. mils of Boiling hot water. No problem. So then we can make up our stuffing, which is the first bit of this dish. The reason we're making the stuffing up first, we're going to need to use our hands to get it into the tin later on. So I want it to be cold enough that I can handle, but still hot enough that I can move it around, mix it, squidge it, everything else like that. So that's why we're doing the stuffing mix first. So as soon as Jan's got the water. Yeah, almost there. Just make the stuffing mix as it says on the packet. So if it says this one's 425 gram, uh, 425 mils per sachet, depending on the stuffing mix you've got, just follow the instructions on the back of the packet. Any stuffing mix works. And again, alternatives, we've got some vegan sausage mix that you could use if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I was just changes say, the flavor slightly. Exactly, but, but it gives you a little bit of a flavor difference. Experiment, experiment, experiment. That's yeah, what it's totally. all about. So water in first, then go in the dry ingredients. Give it a good stir so you get none of those sort of clumpy bits of dry. Mm -hmm. Give it a good stir. You don't want to touch it right now because it's boiling. Yeah. That's why we do it first. Excellent. So that is now mixing itself all up. All of the dry ingredient is going to absorb that water. we we'll just give that really good stir. But that can now be set to one side. Brilliant. So we set that to one side. I'm just going to move my tins out of the way a minute. Because what we're going to do, we've got a really clumpy, heavy, heavy um, terrine dish, whatever else you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Make it in a loaf tin, make it in a cake tin. It really doesn't matter. Okay. But... Make sure you don't do what I did when we trialed this a few days ago. Yeah. And remember to grease the inside of your tin. Okay. Okay. Now you can do it with oil, you can do it with butter, you can do it with margarine. 
you can use spray oil and literally just make sure that you just spray all of the edges. This will stop your terrine once it's cooked from sticking. Lovely. Little bit on the bottom. And then I've got greaseproof paper, okay. baking paper, whatever you want to call it. The way to make sure you cut it to the right size, put your piece of greaseproof down on the thing, sit your dish on top of it, go round it with a pencil, cut it out. Guess what? Perfect fits. It fits in the bottom of there. If you didn't Perfectly. have any paper to hand, you could just be extra thorough with your greasing. Yeah, definitely. If you're using butter or margarine or another fat, you could just get a bit of paper or kitchen roll and just and whip it, wipe it all the way around. Okay. So our, our terrine dish is ready. Our stuffing mix is cooling down so I can put my hands in it. Okay. -do. So let's get on with some of the rest of it. So our tin of beans. Okay, now we've got butter beans. You can use whatever beans you want, whether they're cannellini beans, cannelloni beans, however you pronounce yeah. these beans. <laughs> whatever beans you want, they'll work. Now, I'm just going to drain those into a bowl. Now, there's a reason I'm draining them into the bowl. Mm -hmm. Because we're now going to mash these. Now, some beans mash really, really easily. Yep. And some beans are a little bit tougher and take the a little bit more. can be a bit harder. Crumph. Okay. If you get beans which you really need to crumph, yep. add a little bit of that water back into it. Perfect. It'll loosen it all up. It'll make it a lot easier to okay. mash. Okay. That's why I've done it into a bowl. Really good thinking. And also, <laughs> while you're getting busy with your mashing, yeah. I would just highlight that the liquid that comes from your can of beans, here, I can take that a little right. bit, uh, that liquid is full of protein again. So if you don't end up adding some of it back in, or even if you do, this is really useful ingredient. If you're making a sauce, even a spaghetti bolognese type sauce, something tomato-y, a soup, definitely with soups particularly, oh. it would be really brilliant to add this liquid to your stock or to your liquid content for your recipe. Um, it's full of nutritional value. It adds a really nice natural thickener so if you're making a pie filling and you want to add something creamy to your sauce, go for it. Mine, um, mine aren't playing the game. Mine need a little bit too much elbow They grease. want a, a little bit more liquid. But that liquid is protein gold. So don't be throwing it away. Be finding other ways of using it. Again, That's at better. UK Harvest, we're all about reducing that food waste. This does not need to be poured down the sink. It really can be used in lots and of I think positive that, ways. You know, what you're saying there, Sam, with... Um, with UK Harvest trying to reduce food waste. A lot of food waste comes from in our own home. It does. 70% <clears throat> of all food waste is coming from the home. So anything we can do when we're cooking at home, when we're preparing food, to reduce the amount of food matter that goes in our general waste bin is a real win for the environment. Because once that food waste is in the bin, it goes it to landfill go and it creates part of all of that bigger problem that we know is really impacting the environment. So, so everything mash. you can do to use it, use it. Yeah, go for it. Looking lovely. Is It's not going to be smooth. It's not going to be as smooth as, your, some texture in as there. your sort of potato mash that you no. make to go on top of your cottage pie or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we've mashed that up and hopefully you guys can see. It's got a little bit of body to it. Great. But it's a mash. So we can now use that to make our dish in a minute. Perfect. So that's our, our beans. Lovely. So they're ready to go. What we need to do now, bring that one back in mm -hmm. with our sieve. Our mushrooms and our carrots, okay? We wanna keep them separate. The whole reason with this dish, or the thing with this dish, we're gonna layer it. Uh -huh. So when you cut through it, you get different ribbons of color. Right. So we don't wanna put them all together. So Perfect. we're gonna drain our mushrooms, Lovely. Ready slice. Ready sliced, always a winner. Again, there seems to be sometimes some of us think that if vegetables come in a tin, they're going to be tasteless or they're not going to have as much nutritional value. Uh-uh. They are full impact vegetables. They've often been taken from growing to the tin very quickly. It's not frozen. Absolutely. Everybody used to say, don't have frozen veg. It's not got the nutrition. It's not... Yeah. Complete myth. No. Frozen veg is just as good. It's yeah. brilliant for you. Absolutely. It gets that nutrition into you. And mm. if you're cooking on a budget, mm. and sometimes you've got three of you at home, and then the kids decide that they're not coming home for dinner because they're going to do something else. Yeah. You've bought a load of fresh veg. All of a sudden, there's that chance it's going to go past, mm -hmm. and you're going to end up chucking it. Frozen veg, brilliant way. How many am I cooking for? Oh, the kids are staying out. I'm only cooking for myself. Right, chuck that in. Brilliant. Or, oh, my God, the kids bring all their friends home. 
Great, I've got a load of veg in the freezer. Get it out the freezer. So I'm going to drain my carrots. And in the tin form, go for it. In the tin form, same principle. You've got that option there. It is perfectly nutritious, really tasty, and always worth bearing in mind as an alternative to getting the fresh equivalent. Still, again, in that bowl is now good, tasty so vegetable. You, that is like soup waiting to happen. It is soup waiting <laughs> it to is, happen. Absolutely. It really is. Well done. Right, and this is where it's all going to go wrong. Okay. Because okay? we're live, yeah. this is going to go wrong. All right, Simon. I'm going to try. Share your fears. I'm going to try and go open my tin of corned beef. Oh, it's the tin. <laughs> and I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to come out of the tin Without me having to bash it, scratch there is it, something beat quite, it apart. There is something quite retro and vintage about what oh. Simon is doing right now. Does, is it taking you back to your childhood? It is. It's taking me back to corned beef and pickle is sandwiches they? when they're, I was a little boy. Yeah, they are. They're a special item, um, definitely. It, it used to be the, the Sunday Sunday morning you or whatever. You just don't see tins like this as much. Maybe you do if you're regularly eating pilchards or some of these canned meat um Hand up my nans. I haven't been out doing some form of sport. I have to say, Simon, it looks like that's worked perfectly. I'm hoping. I haven't done some form of sport. Dinner's not ready yet. Do you want a corned beef and pickle sandwich? Yeah. Oh, go get for it. Involved. There you go. Right. Come out of the... Oh. Love it. There yes. we go. I think that's what's supposed to happen. It's a winner. Perfect. It's come out. So what we're going to do, we ideally mm. want to get at least eight slices out of this. So we don't want them really, really fat. All right? So I'm just going to slice through. Lovely. Probably looking between a 50p and a pound coin. In and this thickness. looks absolutely perfect for a recipe involving layers, doesn't it? Oh, you, yeah. you, you've really got the perfect format there to convert that into a layered area in your dish. And I might dish. have got nine slices, so I might be okay. able to have my corned beef Spare one for a retro session later. <laughs> okay. okay, so our prep is pretty much done. All right. So we've got our carrots, we've got our mushrooms, we've got our bean mash, and we've got our stuffing mix. Now it's all about those layers. It's okay. all about bringing it together. Because mm. we said you could put this in the middle of the table, slice it, lots of different colours. It's going to look beautiful. A wow centrepiece dish. A wow dish. moment. Okay. So, go for it. Let's bring our dish in. Get some of this out of the way so everybody at home can see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, bring our dish back in. Lovely. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, and this is a big dish. Yes, all right? absolutely. I'm going to say this is a bigger dish than we were expecting to use. Okay. But that's because the loaf tin I was going to use, we've used for something else. Okay. So we'll see how far all of this goes. Go for it. So I'm going to do a layer. Now, if you're really arty, and you, the bottom is going to be the top, mm -hmm. right? So if you're really arty, you can lay your mushrooms down through the middle. Oh, I think that's a lovely idea for a special occasion. So you're going to invert the whole thing when it's cooked. When it comes the out, the bottom becomes bottom the comes top. Up. So if you wanted, you could get really creative. You could lay a layer like Simon is of mushrooms down the middle. You could put a layer of carrot either side. Oh, you could, you could do anything. It depends are, how much time, how much effort, and absolutely. how beautifully stunning you want the So while to you're look. getting really creative, Simon, if you wanted to, could you incorporate some fresh vegetables? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. if you had a red pepper oh, and you wanted totally. to cut slices or yeah. thin strips, you could use those to Definitely. create part of your design. We're, we're doing it out of a store cupboard. Um, realistically, lots of people especially this time of year, money goes on presents, money mm. goes on the occasion, money goes on making everybody And then you're time. supposed to lay on and a And then you're going, feast. I've then got to feed everybody yeah. that's coming. Right. That's why we've gone, we're going to use what's in the store cupboard. Absolutely. But if you've got peppers that need using up, if you've got fresh carrot, if you've got bags, I think we had spinach somewhere, mm -hmm. tins of sweet corn, anything like that, anything that's going to bring colour. Frozen you, peas would be and, nice. Yeah, even, frozen peas you could in. go in or yeah. tin peas, it doesn't matter. So you really can be creative. Sounds you great. You certainly can. Right. And what we're going to do next, we're going to do a layer of our stuffing mix. Okay. okay. Now, a little tip have a bowl of water next to you mm -hmm. because then you can dump your fingers in it. Okay, doke. And when you put your stuffing mix in, you can prod it into the outside edges. Okay. And your fingers don't get covered. Sounds good. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to just gently. So a spoon there. Yeah. Just gently bring Working all of this in, in to the okay, corners. Lovely. And this now, if you see, it's all sticking to everything, right? But 
If you just uh-huh. do that. And you're sort of condensing I'm squishing down it the layer. down. I want it to squish down and around all of the mushrooms. Brilliant. Because what I want is I want the mushrooms to form that top mm-hmm. encased in So they're going to the sort of stuffing. cook into the stuffing. Yeah. Sounds yum. Yeah. Mushroomy stuffing for the top layer. At the moment, it's on the bottom. But it will be the top. Got it, it will be the top. Brilliant. This is so creative and really simple. I can remember we, we stood in this kitchen about a month ago, mm-hmm. six weeks ago, mm-hmm. looking at lots of different tins, <laughs> lots of different things, and we went, we've got to do this because it's going to help. But we've got to make it tasty. We've got to Absolutely. make it look We've got to make it nice. And we wanted it to really look wow. And so it's got to have that. This when is you a guys, treat. When you guys see the, here's one we made earlier. Yeah. So you haven't got to hang around for 40 minutes mm. waiting for this one. Mm. And I think in terms of... I hope of, you'll agree that we did it. <laughs> I think in terms of the, you know, the most common traditional festive feast that we have at this holiday time, it usually involves a turkey or a chicken or a a big piece of meat in some way and to ask people to forego that or for people who really don't have access to a big expensive centerpiece joint let's be honest this is a really great way of having something special still has that meat element to it if you if you really want to have that and it's going to be like we keep saying that wow factor so it really is a, a definite alternative so this is where you just push it down to make sure all those mushrooms Great. go in. Now, the best thing with corned beef, yep. or other than it tastes really good and it works really well with pickle, uh, the best thing with corned beef and loaf tins or terrine tins, guess what? Perfect. It's exactly the right that size. That is like you planned that, Simon. It's like we planned that it. That is brilliant. And I'm not going to have my bit left over because this terrine dish is bigger. Wow, so though, that is lovely. That Again, just give that a squish down into that stuffing. Right. And then on top of that, we're going to go with our bean mash. Okay. All right. Now, this we only want, we don't want a really big fat layer. Mm-hmm. But again, it can be really based on what you have and yep. how but much. But what we want it to do again yep. is we want it to sit all around. Right. Our... Filling up those gaps yeah. kind of thing. Exactly. Brilliant. Making so, a solid layer. Yep. Yeah. And this is where it's, I love this sort of cooking. You get your hands in. You, you love, get yourself you dirty. You love mucky cooking. I do, do love mucky cooking. Yeah, that's great. Especially when the results are so good. So if you wanted to introduce any other sort of flavor profiles to this kind of a recipe, you could take the whole thing in another direction. You could, for example, yep. Yeah, you could go, we're going quite traditional, perhaps yeah. Mediterranean. You can salt and pepper. You could add mixed herbs or dried herbs, et cetera, yeah. as you go layer by layer. Um, but you could also change it up and go spicy. You could. So you could have a much more curry-based flavor yep. profile to the whole terrine. That could be really gorgeous. Incorporate your vegetables, layer in. Well, I think one thing that the lentils do, the, the beanie lentils, they, they've got a difference in flavor. Absolutely. You can get Cajun ones. You can get barbecue ones. Yeah. You can get whatever. And that, Ooh, I think we're going to have to try that, Simon. Sounds good. I want to stick those, in it? Yeah, why not? I can, can bring them over. We but could. Yeah. I'm just going to go in now with some more veg room. See how you go layer to layer. I can always grab that one for you. Just get in with some more of our Okay, so a little bit mushrooms. more random on the mushrooms, but that's fine. It's going to be a midway layer. Yeah, all good. I want the colour. Yeah, now. cool. This, this isn't about look, this bit. This bit's all about colour. When well, I'm not cutting. about look on look the on layer, the but yeah, in terms yeah. of colour when you slice through. Brilliant. Okay. How you layer is entirely up to you. I know the recipe says repeat it and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. How you layer it up is entirely that up to you. That gives you the freedom to what do What you need to works. make sure is that you've got enough stuffing to do that top layer. So stuffing forms the bottom and the top yep. to really encase the whole terrine. So let's Fantastic. get our carrots in. Now these I am going to go a little bit more, or okay. a little bit less random. Yeah, fine. Because in rows kind of thing. I really want that orange to kick through. Lovely. And this is where if you have got that half a bag of spinach or you have got those fresh herbs that you mm-hmm. bought because you've got to buy them because it's Christmas, so you've got to have it. We've got that half a bag um, of spinach. This is where you could put a layer of spinach leaves in if mm-hmm. you wanted to. Lovely. So you then got 
your, your dark from the meat, you then get to the light of the beans, you then get a little bit of dark from the mushrooms, you've okay. then got that bright orange of the carrot, nice, and then the green of the spinach, and you just keep layering it up. Sounds great. Oops, excuse me. And Sian just yeah, sorry about that. throws tins on the floor. <laughs> excuse me. Um, so once this one goes in, looks good. Wow. And I know that I've covered it, then I'll go random with whatever I've got left. Mm -hmm. Fill in the gaps. Indeedy. And you're well over halfway full in terms of the depth of the yeah. terrine, so that's really I'm quite together. quite happy because I was thinking at one stage, this terrine dish is huge. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> Perfect. So let's get those in there. Okay. Again, just push down okay. all the way through. We want to be pushing down. Really we just want to, to bring everything the together. Lovely. All right. Yep. Now, I'm going to go the other way this time. Good idea. Because otherwise, four ain't going to do it. No, that looks perfect, though. You thought of everything there, Simon. Amazing. That can go in there. Squish, Lovely. squish, squish again. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm ready to top that with my stuffing. Okay. So if you were going to use fresh any time you want to, in it put goes. Put in that layer. Make sure your spinach is washed. Take the stalks off if you want to, but just put it in. You don't need to cook it off it first will just because down. it's going to wilt down when it's in the oven. What I would say is make it at least two, three leaves thick if you can, mm -hmm. so that you really get that green ribbon through. Nice. If you're using anything else that's in season, if you don't want to cook this now, and you go watching this video and it's not coming up to the festive period, it works any time of the year. Yeah. Just look at what's in season if you're going to go fresh. If you're going to go tinned, you can get the tinned veg any time you want. Of course, that's the whole idea. So back Brilliant. in with some stuffing. And this is important to push this one down now. Because this is your binding, everything, bringing everything together. And it actually is a really good texture for sort of, yeah, pushing in and really forming a casing. And for then the, the whole really, sorry, dish. the really good thing, or what I like with stuffing, mm -hmm. crispy on the outside. Yes. Gooey in the middle. True. Um, You're going to get that? Yeah, yeah. The top will go crispy, crispy. Brilliant. Because it, you cook it upwards. Yep. Uh, and then when then, you invert that, then you get that soft, softer um, stuffing at the bottom. Lovely. So I'm spooning this in first because it's still actually quite warm. <laughs> For those who haven't noticed, my fingers touching it and then going. Mm -hmm. So if you need to let Perfect. it cool down a little bit, please, please do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit, I'll be honest, a little bit lucky in this regard because got like teflon fingers you having have. been in the kitchen they've for so a, long yeah. <laughs> had a lot of kitchen um, life. they've had a, a lot of burning themselves on oven dishes and trays and Fair all enough. that sort of stuff that you we don't just... recommend it but no yeah, no you've it's, had a not life of it. it's not recommended that but welcome fair. to catering um so if you need to just give it a few minutes just to let your stuff and cool down that's absolutely fine that's a perfect amount to create that layer so just gonna get my fingers wet again, mm -hmm. so that I can make sure that I'm into all of the corners. I'm pushing down Brilliant. to make sure that it's going to stick with my corned beef. If it gets up the side where you don't necessarily want it, just wipe it away with your finger, squidge it into a gap which is looking like it needs it. So that is now ready. Amazing. to go in an oven. Wow. So what we're going to do with it, we're going to oven cook it. <clears throat> and we're going to oven cook it on about 190, okay. which is about gas mark five. Right. We're going to cook it for 40, 45 minutes. Okay. All right. What you're really looking for is you're looking for the top to be totally and utterly crispy and crunchy. Okay. And when it is, that's when you know that you're ready to go. And if you wanted to, if you were pre preparing this in advance of an event or a gathering or when you want to eat it, yeah. it could go into the fridge, yeah. chill as it is, yeah. and be ready to put in the oven 40 yeah. minutes before you You've got three days serve. in the fridge. Three if you want to prep it early, easy. stick it in the fridge, works just as well. In now, fact, it might help to really chill down those ingredients and force those layers to combine. bring it together. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So we've got our terrine already to go. Fab. But... I'm going to spice this up a bit. Well, okay. not spice it up, as in taste, but, but just yeah. do something a little bit extra. Lovely. So, bringing in a tray, any oven tray, and a tin, a tin okay. of Got potatoes. It. 
tinned potatoes. Lovely, tinned new potatoes. These are tinned new potatoes. So they're going to make us some tiny little roast potatoes. So again, if you don't have access to fresh or raw potatoes, you can make really good little roasties out of tin new potatoes. You certainly can. Brilliant. So about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of oil. That's yep. all we're going to need. Pan. Drizzle that into your pan. Lovely. So one to two tablespoons. Okay. A little touch, sprinkle of mixed herbs. Yep. Could you use any other flavouring? Anything you want. You don't even have to use them, to be honest. I just like Fair mine. enough. Garlic granules, yeah, and salt and pepper, yeah. spicy, as you said. And then these have been drained, so there's no water left in here. Okay. Well, there shouldn't be. Into the oil. Wow, as easy as that. Give them a shake. So that they all get some of that oil all over them. Brilliant. And you'll see when they've all got oil on them because that's why I put the herbs in because then Fantastic. you can see that they go, go green and you notice the ones that haven't decided to roll over because they didn't want to for some obscure reason. Lovely. Give them a good shake. They're going to take about half an hour, 40 minutes in the oven as well. So that can go in. That can go in. This is feeling like a real roast dinner feast coming really. together. Okay, so brilliant. I'm going to stick these in the oven and as I do... Yep. I'm going to take out the, here's one we prepared earlier, Brilliant. because nobody at home wants to sit there or stand there and watch us two for 40 minutes trying to While you're fill cooking. time. You did the perfect, here's one I made earlier, <laughs> Simon. Let's go for it. So if I get these, do you I'm want to bring those. those over? Yeah. And I'll bring this one out. Let's get that one out. That one out. Let's see how it looks. Right, these can go in, so we can cook these now, because the team will eat it, I am sure. So that one goes in. Just stick our roasties in as well. Again, 190, 40, 45 minutes, and we're winning. Cloth. Got one there. So I've actually turned the terrine over. We had to run a knife, I'm going to be honest. We had to run a knife around oh, the, um, wow. the yeah, inside yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, to release the edges. So just to release the edges. Sounds good. Yeah, why not? And then we've brought it all together. We've Brilliant. turned it over. Give it a little shake. Ooh. Wow. Okay. And there we go. That's there. You can see those layers Remember we put the, we put the paper on the top? All we do... I wasn't as delicate with my mushrooms on this one. Yeah. I got all fancy on that. That one. looks great. Just peel that off. Lovely. Our roast potatoes, for those that don't think you can do roast potatoes from tins. Wow. Our roast potatoes are looking good. Crispy They're looking and great. yummy. Yeah, fantastic. So we're going to put those out as well. But hopefully what you can see, I'm going to use the cloth. I'm going to lift it up to that camera up there, Tash. Okay, no. Go Ta for it. Tash is our director today. In it comes. But hopefully what you can see is you can see the layers, the different layers of colour. Absolutely. So as you cut that, and I'm going to try <clears throat> in a minute. Gorgeous. To cut that. Yeah. You will see those ribbons of colour come Lovely. all the way through. Yeah. So if I just, I'm going to cut through the middle and hope. Just gently go down through the middle. Sharp knife would have been good. That's working through. Looking good. Get to the crispy bit on the bottom. Yum. And then if I just scoop that round. Wow. Hopefully, you can see what that your what your family and friends or whoever you're cooking for will see. So all the different ribbons of colour, all the different layers, full of nutrition, five ingredients, out of your store cupboard, served with, that's hot as well, don't pick that up, sorry. Served with some roast potatoes. Amazing roast potatoes that were in a tin. And which were tin potatoes, fantastic. but I can tell you now, they are crispy, they are hot. hot. <laughs> they are crispy, they are hot, they are beautiful, okay? If you want to drizzle gravy on it, drizzle gravy on it. Very if you good. want to, if you want to make it that festive seasonal mm -hmm. and serve it with some cranberry sauce. Or Brussels sprouts. You go, oh, if you pick Brussels, them up. Brussels, mm -hmm. Brussels, Brussels, Brussels. Yeah. But hopefully, guys, what we've shown you is that you can make something totally stunning out of five ingredients that could be in the store cupboard that you quite often get at sort of community food hubs, pantries food banks, all that sort of stuff as well. Absolutely. Inexpensive, easy to cook. Yeah, I think it's probably one of my favourite recipes for giving you the option and the chance to be creative 
and really enjoy finding something special out of something very normal and very common, but turning it into a real into wow gorgeous. centerpiece. Yeah. And bear in mind, this is what I call squidge cooking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get your hands in, you push it all around, you squidge it all down. Perfect for cooking with the family. True. If you've got people that go, I oh, don't want veg, don't like veg, don't like veg. Yeah, but if they cook that. it, yeah, if they absolutely. cook it, they're going to eat it. So there's something you can do with the family. You can do it days in advance and then just whack it through the oven the time that you need it. Perfect. It's a centerpiece. It's wow. It's nutrition. Oh, there's nothing, nothing else really to say about no, it. No, it brings a little bit of festive joy. Yeah. Out of the larder and onto the table. Yep. Yeah. And there you it. go, well guys. Done, Simon. With thanks to Thank Tesco's Community Fund. Absolutely. Um, we hope you've enjoyed joining us in the kitchen today here at UK Harvest. We can't wait to be back with you soon. Have a great holiday season. Yeah, absolutely. Best wishes and for the holidays. From me, goodbye for now. And goodbye from me. See you soon, guys. See you soon. Bye.